that ceremony was simply fantastic. Lord Artorius's speech was brilliant, of course, but Prince Percival was really something, too. He raises up Artorius to help the country and its people, then willingly steps down. Now that's what I call a king. You think so? Well, to me, he just looks like a wimp. He may look that way, but he has a great inner strength. He's excelled as a scholar and a leader since he was young. His only hobby is falconry, but sadly, I hear he hasn't had the time for it lately. You seem like a big supporter of his. Well, he's got two younger brothers, but just between you and me, they're dolts. Worse, they hang with a bad crowd. If anything were to happen to Prince Percival, the future of Midgand would be bleak. I see. So everyone's hopes are riding on him, then. Which means Midgan's vulnerable without him. The Exorcists sure were out in full force to see the Shepherd's inauguration, weren't they? What about that guy you're after? Was he there? What, and have to stand around looking all proper? Nah, no, that's not his style. Then I thought he was one of the top Exorcists. That wouldn't matter to him. Huh. All right. Actually, Velvet, speaking of the Shepherd, I noticed he wasn't using his right arm. Was he hurt or something? Yeah. He was badly wounded a long time ago. He lost the use of his sword arm. That's what I figured. But don't get the wrong idea. He's still a master swordsman with his left arm. I can tell that from the way he moves. His movements are steady and measured, and his chi is centered below his navel. Huh? Why does that matter? Some people say that all the body's spiritual energy gathers in a place about two finger widths below the navel. Even when he appears to be in a state of total peace, his guard is never down. He's a formidable adversary. <laughs> and I think I know why my target has placed himself at Artorius' side. Because now I want to take Artorius down too. High Priest Gideon is an honest and righteous man. He's dedicated his life to his faith, and to the Church. Now, as the representative of the clergy, he's thrown his full support behind the Abbey. Hmm. So, he's a man of principle. That's right. He even donated his personal savings to support orphanages and hospitals. So be at ease. For he offers up prayers for all equally, even for the more... dubious among us, such as yourselves. Right. I'm so grateful. I can feel the tears of gratitude coming. Any moment now. Outrageous! Why doesn't the Abbey crack down on the taverns? They are dens of evil that dispense only luxury, temptation, and escape. They must be stopped. I'd rather they didn't. That place over there has the best drinks in town. <laughs> See? That's exactly what I mean. They tempt us into wickedness, ruining man and woman alike. The more you drink, the happier and more joyful you get. All the important things in life stop mattering. Their Mabo curry is delicious. <laughs> no, no, no! See? Even children are being tempted by their evils. Eating both Mabo and curry together, it's heresy! There is a limit to the amount of luxury one can endure. What the world needs now is abstinence, austerity, restraint. If you want to deny yourself, go ahead and do it. But don't force your beliefs onto others. People eat to live. Some even live to eat. It's part of being human. Velvet. That's pretty convincing coming from you. Leave me alone. 
D hey, I want to eat and drink to my heart's content too, but doing so makes us no better than animals. In order for humanity to survive these harsh times, we need to overcome our instincts and act like rational beings. Come, sinner, and repent to your wicked deeds. Repent? Are you talking to me? Yes. When I look at your vestments around your chest, your hips, I can tell your sins are many and deep. Say that again. Exactly what were you staring at? Well, mankind is rife with sin, and I am no different. You must acknowledge your misdeeds and confess them to the great Empyreans. By confronting your sinful urges, you will be empowered to resist them. Is that so? You're saying I just need to confess all the bad things I've done? Yes. Confess your darkest sins, my child, assured that none is beyond the forgiveness of the Empyreans. Empyreans, hear my confession. When I was in prison, I instigated a riot and used it to break myself out. Huh? Then I set fire to some warehouses in town and stole a ship to make my getaway. Then I teamed up with some pirates to destroy a military fortress. I killed anyone who got in my way. What? What do you think, Father? Will the Empyreans forgive me? I... Uh, uh, I think you should turn yourself into the Abbey and let them help you repent. That's convenient. I'm already planning on going to the Abbey. You see... I'm going to kill their boss, Artorius. I, I need an exorcist over here! Quick! Somebody! Anybody! <laughs> That's... about how I figured it'd go. Praise be Shepherd Artorius. Thanks to him, people have started worshipping the Empyreans again. Now our salvation is at hand. The Empyreans. They are the gods that created the world? Yeah. The four Empyreans each rule one of the four elements. Earth, water, fire, and wind. I read in a book that Empyrean worship is the oldest form of human religion. The Midgan Church also worshiped the Empyreans. But because we've had peace and prosperity for so long, true belief in them has slowly faded. So now that people are frightened of the demon blight, they're clinging to their once forgotten gods. Wait a minute. Maybe Artorius is using religion to manipulate the people into following him. Oh, great Empyreans! Please grant Shepherd Artorius the strength to save your humble servants. If that's the case, he's done a damn fine job of it. That is one impressive cathedral. It fits the capital. Yes. It's incredible. Hmm. It's as I heard. It wasn't built using Moloch arts, but the latest architectural engineering techniques. Look at those arches. The mathematical logic. The structural ornamentation. This is an architectural marvel. So, is that Empyrean in there? I highly doubt it. Empyrean worship has become mostly symbolic over the years. This cathedral wasn't built as a place of worship. It's commemorative, to celebrate the continent's unification. In other words, a show of power. That explains why they spared no expense. It's too early to be impressed. This is just the entrance, and it's unfinished. They're constructing a colossal temple inside here. They say it'll take centuries to complete. Centuries? That's insane. How could they think that's a good idea? Your guess is as good as mine. I suppose that sometimes, humans just have a need to push their limits. Yeah, seriously. The Reaper and a Demon are shaking their heads at this overwrought monstrosity. Intrinsic worth, zero. I wonder what it'll look like when it's finished.
Take a look at this. This recipe looks real tasty. Scout ship setting sail. Food's ready. It's nothing special. You sure you want me for this? a history book titled The Rise and Fall of Midgand. About 800 years ago, our continent was conquered by a military force from another continent. Few records exist of the following 500 years, a period known as the Era of Darkness, or the Dark Period. Then 300 years ago, a great hero named Claudin Asgard reunited the kingdom, bringing an end to the Dark Period. Claudin, huh? Where have I heard that name before? All right, that's enough for today. Thanks for teaching me, Arthur. Your techniques are so amazing. Where did you learn them? 
They came from my own master, a man named Clauden. He developed them himself. Wow! They're so graceful! I wish I could move like that. I've taught you the forms, but for some reason your execution deviates from the ideal. Uh, well, my body just kind of moves on its own. You're a handful, Velvet. But I will say you do resemble Claude in some. He was a strange person himself. He always wore this peculiar cape, for instance. A uh, cape, you say? Deep down, Clauden was strong like fire, vivacious like water, steadfast like earth, and free like wind. I can't help but admire him to this day. Wow, I'd love to meet him. Sadly, that's impossible. Is he... dead? Yes, he is. He died to protect me. That's why I... No way. The events recounted in this book happened 300 years ago. It can't be the same Clauden. Uh, Velvet, are you okay? I'm fine. Don't mind me. King Clauden was quite strong, wasn't he? He was more than just that. He's the most well-loved and trusted king in our history. Or so the book claims. To this day, all of Miggan's rulers claim to be direct descendants of King Claude and Asgard. Knowing that, there might be meaning behind them bestowing Arcturus with the grandiose title of Shepherd. I could see it as an attempt to recreate the same glory enjoyed by the Hero King who ended the Dark Period. If that's true, it's a childish ploy. The world's not so easily changed. I wouldn't be so sure. What matters is that the title inspires hope in the people who in turn give him their support. Then, as their shepherd, he can guide his flock in any direction he pleases. Hmm. If Arturius knowingly accepted that title, we can be sure he's fully committed to his cause. Oh, he's certainly committed. I've seen just how far he's willing to go. He may be the Shepherd now, but no one knows who he was before the Advent, or what he did. No, they don't. But he showed up one day with a Malak in tow, routed the demons, and formed a band of skilled young exorcists. That sounds pretty suspicious. Right? But the Kingdom readily acknowledged his abilities and his conviction, and threw its full support behind him. Maybe he plans on usurping power for himself. Not likely. He's worked tirelessly to rebuild the church and state, and shore up the royal family's position. Lining his pockets from the state coffers, then? Not the slightest chance. Rather, he's got all the other higher-ups worried he's working himself to death. Then what's he after? Hmm. Maybe there is no ulterior motive. Maybe he is our shepherd. Whatever the case, if he hadn't shown up when he did three years ago, Midgand would be a smoking ruin. Greetings, Magilu's Menagerie. You've come to exactly the right place. You must be a Bloodwing. What do you want? You already know about the Code Red demons, right? The really strong demons the Abbey wants gone? Yeah. Would you ever consider hunting them down for us? We'll reward you properly. Reward? Why pay us when the Abbey would do it for free? It's complicated. The Abbey is calculating in their deployments. 
especially where Code Red demons are concerned. I get it. They'll only act if they determine the demon would cause more harm than the losses they'd incur in battling it. That does seem logical. But sometimes, people have lost a loved one to such a demon. Or sometimes, they have a connection to the person the demon used to be. Wherever there's a Code Red demon, you can bet there are people willing to pay good money to have it killed. <laughs> and let me guess, that's where the Blood Wings come in. Exactly. There are Blood Wings all throughout Midgant who have information on these Code Red demons. If you defeat a demon and report back to my comrades, they'll make sure you're well compensated. All right, I understand. But I won't make any promises. That's fine. No sense in drawing up a contract when the hunter probably won't survive anyway. If you get results, let us know. We'll hold up our end. That being said, I'd feel guilty if I didn't help out at least a little, so... Here, take this. Those blood wings are definitely a rough crowd. To be fair, things are never that straightforward when you're dealing with demons. All that matters is that there's something in it for us if we hunt those Code Red demons. The only thing better than fighting formidable foes is getting paid for it. Just remember that these Code Red demons are tough enough to make the Abbey shiver. We'd be wise not to underestimate them. We should talk to those Blood Wings before considering any of the marks. They might have information that will help us prepare. Yeah, and we better remember to upgrade our equipment. Right. Hey, Laffy said. What is it, Rokuro? Mabo Curry. Huh? Oh. <laughs> You're an interesting one. You like Mabo Curry that much, huh? It smells good. And it's creamy and kind of spicy. Eating it made me feel nice. I'd say you love it then. Do all Malakim have such an appetite? Each has their own tastes. Some eat a lot. Some eat a little. Just like humans or demons. What do you like, Aizen? Drinks, I suppose. What else? Uh... Pretty much just drinks. Don't you like anything else? Is it a problem if I don't? No. I'm just wondering. For me, it's drinks and candied sweet potatoes. That's where you boil strips of sweet potato in oil and then coat them in sugar, right? Yeah, I never get tired of them. So, you like to drink, but you've also got a sweet tooth? Yeah. Is that so strange? No. Candied sweet potatoes? Sounds good. Uh, There's nothing to be ashamed of. It's just a sign that you're alive, remember? Right. Move it or die. <laughs> Until I pull out the good stuff.
You better be ready. Sorry to catch you down. Hey, that noisy demon looks pretty strong. Think it might be one of those Code Red demons? doesn't matter to me. I'd rather not waste my time fighting it if I don't need to. I don't see it as a waste of time. Look, the Abbey only has a handful of exorcists strong enough to take something like this down, right? Probably. I'd say Praetors like Lady Teresa and the Legates could probably take it on. And those guys are all your enemies, right? <sighs> I see where you're going with this. The Abbey is strong both in its individual members and as an organization. And if we're to close the gap between us and them, we need to fight strong opponents like this demon. That's what I would do. But you're free to make your own decision. All right. I'll concede the point. But we should determine just how strong it is first. I don't want us to bite off more than we can chew. That goes without saying. I'd rather not get myself killed due to inadequate preparation. You don't have to worry that much. If you want to go fight, I'll help keep you safe myself. I promise. I don't recall asking for your protection. You don't need to. Always ready to fight. No escape! <laughs> Did you think you could escape me? I'll end this quickly. No escape! Ready to die? Think you can dodge? Just try! Perfect mayhem! special. Oh. 
food's ready. It's nothing special.
We're finished here. You'll be rushed on my blade. <laughs> Sorry to cut you down. Unarmed? Hardly. These are deadly weapons. Nothing can stop these fists! Oh, 
still worth killing. <laughs> 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 Be proud. You made me unleash my full power. Finish this quick. No, no, no. If 
if you want to live, get out of my way. Ready to fight. Take a look at this. Scout ship setting sail. What on earth are guards doing here? Watch out! They've got molecules! They're no ordinary cell swords! No mercy! Wounds that will shoot! Cut them! Make them pay! Too slow! Let's go! Sheesh, what do you suppose they were guarding? A little lost lamb, perhaps. You think they're holding Mendy captive? Is there someone here named Mendy? We've come to help. Oh, thank goodness. I can finally go home. So they were keeping you prisoner. 
They made you mine vermilion ore? Yes, I discovered a method of refining it, and it cost me dearly. What's vermilion ore? A rare stone made of concentrated nutrients. It can be used in medicine, but it's also poisonous. Correct. So you were making medicine? Yes. They were forcing me to make a nutritional substance called nectar. Isn't vermilion ore supposed to be highly addictive? Uh, I told them that. But what choice did I have? Whatever. Our task is complete. Can you get back to Logris on your own? I can. I'm terribly sorry. Why apologize to me? We've done what we came for. Let's get back to the old lady. We're finished here. Let's go. Thank you. 
Well, we've learned one thing coming to the capital. The Abbey and Shepherd Artorius have expanded their power immensely. They might as well be the Empire now. They have the undying support of the populace. The Shepherd, savior of humanity. <laughs> I wonder what he meant by the blessings of the Empyrean Enominat. That's what they call the gods they worship in church, right? The Empyreans? He promised a lot in that speech. But can he really command such a power? I have no idea. Not even we Malachim know of them beyond the stories and legends. He called Enominat the fifth Empyrean. There should only be four, one ruling each element. Is he talking about a new Empyrean? Have you heard anything, Lafi said? Sorry. I don't know anything about this. It doesn't matter. We should be careful about taking his words at face value. The man is no saint. He'll stop at nothing to achieve his aims. But there's no way he could have a god at his beck and call. Don't underestimate the Abbey. Trust me, I'm not. That's why I'm using the Shadow Guild to help us hunt them down. And to make sure that I kill him. I hear Mendy made it back safe. That takes care of that problem. Keep up the good work. Destroying red crates in a warehouse? Doesn't sound very nice. Have we ever been nice? <laughs> I suppose not. This is a contract job, so let's keep costs down. I'll call the Von Eltia and have her draw the guards away. If you would. What will we be destroying? Who knows? That's hardly our concern. Stop out.